Welcome to another episode of Stand On Your Business. I'm your host, Nina Gonzalez, with... I am Natasha Robinson. Today, we are at the Legacy Power Conference, and we are very excited to start interviewing the attendees. And today, we have a special treat. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Coffee Iman of the Coffee Iman channel on YouTube, and I also have a magazine called Coffee. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. Did yes. you know that? No, she just dropped that gym on us like right okay, now. Okay, right now. Okay. okay. All right. So tell us a little bit about the magazine, what inspired you to want to interview individuals okay. and all of that great stuff. Well, I was always a magazine buff, a hip hop head growing up. But every magazine I would buy would have the same people on the cover. And I'm like, this isn't the only dope people out here. So I, I could not find work doing it. I was fresh out of school. And I'm like, you know what? I'll start my own thing. Okay. And so I started interviewing people that were like creatives, behind the scenes stylists, people that were designers. And it just started snowballing from there. I couldn't get enough of it. So would that be considered a self-published? Yes. Oh, so you funded funded yourself? I did it all, yes. Editing, writing. I went to I went back to school for graphic design and I did all the layouts. Everything that I have, I did every single layout. Wow. When I first your... started, I had help. And then it was like finding consistency was just mm -hmm. a struggle. So you do everything yourself because the help wasn't. The help what wasn't you there. I even learned how to do photography because I would hire photographers and people weren't taking the angles I wanted. And then when I got enough money to get people that I needed, I would, you know, hire other people to do professional shoots. But in the meantime, I would just go around and do my own photography. So why come to the Power Conference? So well, I know why Tiana not? Right. So what inspired <laughs> you to come here to meet everyone? We're here today. Yeah. What inspired you to wake up this morning and do an all-day conference all with day, the Legacy right? Board? So, so I was introduced to the Legacy itself, like maybe a couple months ago. And then I had the honor of meeting Kiana herself. And okay. so I was like, you know what? Even if I'm intertwined in any other way, I have to see what it's all about. Okay. I have to see this list of people. I mean, I did my own research on the list. And I'm just like, man, people are just out here Being motivating, great. inspiring, and out here just living a dream, right? But it's so hard when you have that tunnel vision, like I was telling her earlier, that you don't see other people working when you're working. Right. So oh. every now and again, I look up. And I just, you know, embrace everyone else doing their thing. And then, you know, I go back in my little hole right. <laughs> and try to get more work done. So today I'm taking a break. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about your YouTube. How does that look like? Is okay. it just like a, a reflection of the coffee magazine or what is that? Well, I I realized the part of the magazine that I really love was the interviewing part. Hmm. Not even like and the And now articles. you get interviewed. <laughs> That's what I <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's just such a blessing. So... So with the with the pod, I mean with the uh, YouTube channel, I started creating little shows. So my first show on the YouTube channel was called 15 Minutes, where I used to interview the person with just them and the camera, and it was like a master class. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I just started doing different things, trying to figure out where my niche was. So my latest series is called But First Coffee, of course, with the play on words. Yeah. <laughs> and then that I had the chance of flying out and actually sitting down with people in a talk show format and interviewing the people that I wanted to see. Awesome. awesome. Well, so, that's super interesting. Thank you so much yep. for sharing all of those Thank nuggets with us today. <laughs> now, where can everybody find you? Well, you can find me at Coffee Mag, which is C-O-F-F-E-A-M-A-G on all social media platforms. You can find me at CoffeeMag.com and also on YouTube.com slash at Coffee Iman. So that's C-O-F-F-E-I-M-A-N. I know all right. a lot. <laughs> now, one, going back to the conference, if you had to meet one person today from, because you said you, you researched the list. Yeah. Who, who would you like to interact with or who you, were you excited about just sitting down and listening to? I was very excited to see um, Dr. Dramon with Pastor Dramon because um, he was very interesting. And I was like, okay, this guy, his branding is really great. And he has a positive message. I also want to meet D. Robinson if I get a chance. Okay. Um, a couple she people, did her research. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of people I have seen um, at another platform, which was Tequila Chavez. I'm thinking I'm saying her name right. And, of course, I want to see Jeezy and Lil Ray. Like, okay. who don't want to okay. see right. them, right? right. right. <laughs> but, um, I mean, even me, Kiana, in person today was great. I mean, the energy here is positive. It's always good to find a circle of people that aren't like, no, 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 or like, oh, we don't want to help you shine. This is 
like a really good platform she has built. So awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, like I told you before, this is the Stand On Your Business um, podcast. Yes. You are a boss business owner, but sometimes we have to inspire each other to stand on your business. So that is what our podcast hey, is all about. And you ladies are standing on yours. Because mm. this, uh, this right here, right here, <laughs> this, is, this is called standing on your business. Awesome. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the time talking to me. Thank you, ladies. No worries. Right. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And welcome. Uh, well, not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so we're signing off from this uh interview, but we will stay tuned at the Legacy Power Conference. Hey guys, we are live from the Power Legacy Awards Conference, and I am here today at Stand On Your Business. I am Natasha Robinson, and my host is Nina Gonzalez, and we are here interviewing standout people that we have found who are participating in this power conference. Now, Natasha called me this morning and she said, Nina, you have to meet this person. She called me an hour before this conference even started, which was like shocker to me that we had already found a highlight and somebody that we wanted to interview today. Yay. So with that being said, can you talk to us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do and all of that good stuff? So it's funny that you say who I am, right? Because I just wrote a book called Who Do You Think You Are? Oh, wow. And it took for me to do this book to really identify who I am so that I can answer that question, right? What? So I am Liz Toussaint. I am a life coach. I'm also a radio personality on Soul 106.3. You can see me every, hear me every Sunday <laughs> nice. from 9 to 11. Um, I am a transformation coach. So what that looks like is in our lives, because the life that I've lived, I lived a lot of life. Right. That's Natasha knows me from the mortgage life mm -hmm. that I've lived. I was a loan officer. I've been a chief of staff. I'm also a musician. I and heard so her sing. I heard all, her sing. <laughs> in all of the things that I've done, I've always coached, right? So on my journey to figure out who I am, I had to figure out who I was in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like what makes my heart feel good when I'm doing it? What makes me feel the most relaxed and the most in my body? And it's when I'm talking to women like you or yes. men that are ambitious. I guess we'll talk dreams. to the men, y'all. We're going we're gonna to include the men <laughs> Hold in on this today. Yeah, she, yeah. She, I'm hypnotized now. <laughs> yeah, so when, I, when I'm talking to people who are ambitious, it really makes me feel good to help people have that moment where they go, oh, I can give myself grace there because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so when you're moving into spaces of growth and you don't really know what's on the other side of it, I have worked through so much of that that I wrote this book to help people become clear, one, on who they are in their heart, two, what they want, and then three, create processes for themselves that soothe them as they're moving through those uncomfortable areas that is transformation and growth. Got you. And you resonated with me this morning when I was here in my pajamas setting up for today. And the purpose of the Stand On Your Business podcast is because we, myself and Nina, personally needed to stand on our business. Yeah. Yes. And when we talked this morning, I myself is I'm going through the transformation of who am I? Right. So for you to come to me, it's like the Lord was sending me a signal yes. this morning. So I was like, Nina, I met this young lady and she is amazing. But we are have a lot of things that we are not doing correctly, that we are not standing on our business on. So our podcast is to take individuals on that journey. So I wanted to say thank you for thank coming you. out today because you resonated with me. And this is definitely a topic because who who am I? Who are you? We go through the motions every yeah. day. So give us a little more about, you know. What that looks like. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the techniques that I use is when you start your morning, before you talk to anyone, mm. when you're in the shower, be with yourself. Mm. Don't think about what you have to do that day. Just be with yourself. Be with your heartbeat. Be with the way you feel in your body. Pay attention to what your body is asking of you. Are you dehydrated? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you need to take deeper breaths in that morning period? And when you work through the book and you get your, your things that, that soothe you, because mm. if you find yourself having an anxiety attack, which is something that I identify with, when I know when I'm going through a transition because I begin to have these physical anxiety attacks. So it and would be really bad that I literally took a shower talking to Chuck 
while rushing here to get ready because I couldn't get him off the phone. So I literally had to just jump in the shower because I didn't want to be later than I was. Yeah. So there was no thinking time. I was literally like, I mean, I multitasking. The Not way that we're thinking programmed. Time. The, yeah. the way that we're programmed is to go, like because we have so many scheduled tasks everywhere to be. But I don't think we've scheduled that alone time. That's right. not something that has ever been taught to us. I mean, I know in the church they do talk about devotional and your morning prayer and all of that. But I don't know that it's a rigorous schedule. I right. schedule it, but I feel like I'm cheating the world. Like, how dare me to have two hours to myself when I have some people to call back? Here's the thing, though. If you don't take the time for yourself and you're giving yourself to other people, you're giving to them from a depleted place. Right. Her. You're, you're, you're not showing up for you. So how are you truly showing up for other people? Right? So even as a coach, the coaching group that I'm a part of, we prioritize showing up for ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Because how can I show up for you if I'm tired? And it's, right? and it's so true because I know millions, many serial entrepreneurs. I'm a serial entrepreneur. And people every day say, Natasha, I don't know how you do it. I know, I don't know how you do it. But this is kind of like my hobby. But I do think that self-care is important. And my 2024 resolution was to not have a resolution, right? No goals. Good Just for to you. embrace Good for what you. I have already going on and enjoy and appreciate what I have already. And I promised myself I wouldn't do anything new in first quarter. So Excellent. that's kind of where my headspace was. Excellent. Well, I have the opposite problem. I do a lot of self-care. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I do a lot of self-care. Like, I do a lot I of self-care. I do. I mean, my family knows Sundays are mine. Um, my Saturday afternoons, I love to have fun. I love all things that tender to me. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like what, where I find friction is usually in my career or in my task driven life mm -hmm. right where if i don't see things going my way i isolate and then i become the champion for everybody mm -hmm. so that's where i think i struggle with and i know a lot of people struggle with that because it comes across as um passive aggressiveness okay. right so that's how it portrays and how it comes out in my life okay so what i would say for someone like you is the time that you take when you feel, so what that is is a trigger, right? You're being triggered by an experience and then now you have a mechanism that I call a policy that you implement when you find yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable, right? Right, right, So right. then you insulate, right? You isolate. So what I would say is that in the moment that you feel the need to isolate, make the, de make the decision to do something different. Hmm. Right? Yeah, something different like what? Choose something different. Whatever would feel good to you at the time. So you have to identify when you isolate, why are you isolating? Right? What's the reason for the isolation? Are you feeling like you're overwhelmed? Are you having an anxiety attack? Like you got to... I feel like it's more place. defeated, right? You're I feel defeated. defeated. You feel defeated. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so then the question is, why are you feeling defeated? Like what happened that caused you to feel defeated? What was the expectation that you think you didn't meet, right? Because that is the point of transformation. Because if you get to that point where you're triggered and you're going into your previous way of doing things, which may or may not have worked for you, if you can make a different decision just to try it, then you get a different outcome. If you can say, if you can articulate to the people around you I'm feeling defeated right now because, and this is what I need from you all. Then people will begin to make decisions about how to show up for you mm. better, right? I, how did you even go on this path? Like what started with the book? Because all of this, all of this information, like it's there and it's sort of in our brains, but how did you, how were you able to like tailor it all and be so specific? And well, I mean, the way you're speaking to me, I know you're speaking to a lot of our listeners out there because I cannot be the only one. Because you are on point. You're resonating <laughs> with two people who are going through the opposite issues, but mm -hmm. it's touching. And all think about how many more. The pain points. How many more. Yeah. If, so I went through some really, really hard times in my life that I had to walk myself through, right? COVID for many people was rough. 
And I think what I appreciated about COVID is that it sh slowed the whole world down. Yes. We all had to look at our lives. But did you really think it slowed down the mortgage world? Because I had, Girl, I no. had no no I made time. the most money exactly. I had yeah. no in the mortgage time world during COVID. Right. Yeah, no, but it slowed down the world. Like it did you could hear the, the world. nature change. Yeah, right. Like the birds, the do like you could hear they they lived. Yeah, they flourished during yeah. that time. <laughs> and energetically, it slowed people down because it made people look at their homes because they were in it. Right. Uh, A lot of times yeah. we run from our homes into our work. Right. But when you have to be at home with your family and the people that you take care of, you begin to reevaluate everything. And that was a point of reevaluation for right. me. And I made one of the hardest decisions that I've ever made in my life, which was to get out of mortgage. Mm. Right. And. So Start after making coaching. the most money ever, you said, I'm getting out. You kind of did it at perfect timing. Because yeah. after COVID, things got really I've also learned bad. to listen to my team. Mm. We all have one. I know you probably really know this because I can feel your team <laughs> around you. Um, but we all have a team that talk to us every day. And if you learn to listen to yourself, you can hear your ancestors guiding you throughout the day. Mm. Like you said, you were having a conversation. I popped up. I was thinking to myself, I would love to meet with people like you all. Mm. So we attract all the time, all day long. And if we learn to focus on our heart and, and do what our heart is asking us to do, you'll constantly attract the things that you want. Mm. So I ended up landing a huge um, contract to coach. A, a, Congratulations. A major, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is somebody that I've been coaching with for a long time. Okay. But when I decided to move into coaching, she and I had a conversation. And I, she was just like, well, you've already been doing it. I'm the chief of staff at Brown Sugar Bakery. I just transitioned completely into her trans transformation coach. And well, that's Stephanie congratulations. Hart. Thank wow, you. Congratulations. Because it's hard to make different moves. And change is scary. Change is scary. Change it's is uncomfortable. Scary. It's, it's yeah. very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. And if you've had experiences where you felt, quote unquote, failure, or you felt like people have laughed at you, or people who have looked at you and said, who she thinks she is, or why she <laughs> why she thinks she can do this, that, and the third. It's like, why, why, why can't I? Right. Why can't I think that I can do it? You know what I'm saying? And I don't even know what I'm doing that you think <laughs> right. that that you would even say that you to me. I think I'm good. sucking right now. Right. And you're asking and who I think I am. And that's how I feel. Like sometimes people call you and they're like, oh, no. This, 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 or Nina or Natasha, and you like, you just don't even know you just what don't is even happening know. right now. Exactly. But we have to come out here and smile and make sure everything. But I think yeah. that we need to make it normal to be going through things, right? Because everybody does. And we I think do. people put so much pressure on themselves, including myself. Mm -hmm. I'm very hard on myself. Yeah. And we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect or to be what we see on what social media. What you think success is <laughs> exactly and we really don't know and you really don't know because who's who's walking around with their bank statement out on their shoulder right yeah, yeah. we we believe that people are successful because it they look what like they they're portray successful. exactly what you they're have portraying. no idea what's happening in somebody's life i went on windy city live last weekend okay. wow. to perform my my single and then I did Fox afterwards. The Tuesday before my press weekend, I had a complete anxiety attack. Mm. And because I do the work of completely understanding myself, I woke up sick, throwing up. Mm. And I was thinking to myself, like, man, what did I eat or whatever? And then I understood this is not you're not sick for real. Yeah. Right? You're scared. Oh, right. Oh, right? Oh, wow. And it, and it is controlling. Oh, my God. That. I just got shivers yeah. everywhere. I was scared. And so I went into my office because I could have called off for work and be like, I'm not coming in. I'm, you know, I'm going through. And I said, no, that's not what this is. This is fear showing up to see if I've done the work. Right. Okay. And so I went into the, to work and they were like, oh, Liz, you don't feel good or whatever. And I said, no, I'm fine. I'm just not OK. And I've got to look fear in the face and give it the middle finger. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm Look sorry. Fear Can in I the not face. do that? <laughs> Look fear in the face. And give it the, And you better tell it to go somewhere. Yeah. Okay. We all have that voice in the back of our head that tells us all the things that we shouldn't be doing or that we can't do or that we haven't worked hard enough to, to be. You know what I'm saying? Or when and we make that mistake, then we beat ourselves down. It validates, down, it validates that so voice. Down so hard we can't pull ourselves back up. And exactly. That's 
me all day. And like you said, that hard time may be just a barrier for your next level. Yeah. But because you would have caught off that day, now you might have set yourself back. Right. Five steps from getting to that next level. Exactly. Or when I took myself to the television station to perform live a song that I had not done, right? I could have allowed fear to affect my performance. Yes. Wow. But instead, I was like, I made the decision to put myself in a position where I am performing on live television. Right. I am going to show up and show out yes. like I should. Right. Yes. That's what we're so, talking about. So okay. if you stand in the space, like I'm coaching, right? So when you ask me to come sit on this couch, why would I come here with insecurity? You know what I'm saying? Right. Why would I not stand you in? You have to come and stand and on, on your, your business. business. You got to stand on your business. <laughs> because what's the point? Right. I've jumped out of a plane before. Like, why would I put on all that gear, get in a plane, go 30,000 feet in the air, and then be like, ooh, I don't want to jump. <laughs> Well, I'm proud of you. Well, thank I you. I'm proud you. of you. We yes. need more voices like yours we do. to talk about standing on your business, to yeah. get inside ourselves, to see who we are. What are we supposed to do? Have we had our medical exams? Have we done the things that we need to do? And it is a million people in this world that you see every day that you think is standing on their business and they are not. No, they are not. So this it, show is the reality of it is. we can start today. Yes. But what, and we need more voices like hers, but we need more available and open ears to listen and yes. receive because a lot of times you have the right words but pride um routine all of that will shut you know will shut this good console that you're providing well us. the beautiful thing about that is that the ear that is ready is Ooh. ready you don't worry about the ears that are not ready. Okay. Right. Because okay. They, when they get ready. When they when they are ready, they will hear it. If they hear it the first time and it does not resonate, it's still a seed planted. Because if they take their journey, when you're on your journey, you'll hear it again. You might hear it from somebody else. They might say it in a way that resonates with you more mm -hmm. than what I said. Okay. But I'm showing up for me. You know what I'm saying? And if you get something it. from me spreading my wings, then I have served my purpose. And I'm excited about it because I can see beautiful women like you showing up for yourselves, you know, and giving yourselves grace. That's, That's one what thing it's I'm going to do is no. I'm going to show up for me. You got to show up for you I'm and be show honest every with day. yourself. <laughs> be honest Except with yourself. Accept you for who you are. Like I just told my therapist, I'm like, look, I need to understand me. You know what I'm saying? Don't help my feelings. Help me become a better person because yeah. at the end of the day, there's always something else we can work on yeah. that gets our next level. But we have to be willing to identify what is wrong with us first. Well, nothing's wrong with you. Okay. Come on. Tell me some more. Make me feel good right nothing's now. Nothing's wrong with you, friend. Honestly, we, when we, when, okay, you have children? Yes. So when your children are born, they mm. know nothing about earth. Nothing. It is your job to teach them how to walk, what the language is that you all speak. It is your job to teach them what society looks like and how to move in society. Mm -hmm. If they do something that gets them a negative response, then you just adjust. You're not doing anything wrong. You heard right. that, child? Right. Adjust. You're not doing anything wrong. Pivot. Just adjust. Mm -hmm. Identify what it is that your goal is. And then when you make a move that doesn't get you what your goal is, adjust. Okay. There, you, did, you can't do it wrong. Just you can't adjust. do life wrong. Everything is divine. Okay. You're right where you're supposed to be all the time. And I received that. Yeah, I received, whatever lessons. I received that. We, so we, we having I. a live one-on-one -on -one session yeah, on the Standby on Your Business <laughs> podcast live. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. We're being so I want to so. ask you guys, do you understand what your business is that you're standing on? Yeah. I understand what my business is that I'm standing on. I think so. Okay. So, you want, you want my answer? Yeah. Okay. So the business that I'm standing on is to be the best version of Natasha Robinson. Period. Period. I love Hashtag that. Hashtag period. Hashtag period. <laughs> so, and the business that I'm standing on is to live the biggest life that I can. I love that. I've, I've experienced huge losses and, and that has catapulted me into living major. Like I was inspired by my son who passed away 
to um, zip line through the jungles of Tulum. I love to it. To dog sled on the highest mountains in Big Sky, Montana. And I have so much more to live and experience in this world. So my business is to live big. I to, love that. To live a big, beautiful life because we experience what we experience, but life is beautiful. Absolutely. I love you guys' <laughs> answers because a lot of people think standing on their business has something to do with monetary gain. Not at all. And standing we on your business. take it with us. You cannot take it with you. Standing on your business is enjoying every moment of your life. When you breathe in, you breathe in the things that you like to smell and you breathe out anything that's not in alignment. Yes. Okay. Now you brought some stuff with you. I did. Right, so you gotta tell us about okay. it. So mm -hmm. I, this is my spray that I made. <laughs> so in my book, when you get to the, your 10 sensory things that you create for yourself in your day, one of them is smell. Okay. And so for me, when I'm doing things that I've never done before, or if I feel like I'm in an environment where my energy can be taken from me, cause it happens. We exchange energy with people every yes. single day. Um, when you find yourself in an environment and you want to stay in alignment, I have my spray. Come on, let me get it. Let me get it. <laughs> let me ever see what we I have my with. spray. Yes. Mm. Yes. And it reminds me of my home. It's going to make me call so off. I am always. <laughs> <laughs> so that I always can feel comfortable no matter where I am. I got it. Bring you back to some people it, use words and you using a scent. I use a scent. I like it. Sometimes, if you know, you can't be out in the street with spray, just spraying people. You can't. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I have a smell that's right here. Right. And I'll just go here, especially if Bring I know I'm going into an environment where I might be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I like okay. that. A comfort zone. Comfort zone. Yeah. So tell us how to find you on your social handles. How can we purchase this book that I already know I want a copy of? So the book is here today. Okay. It's on sale for twenty five dollars, but you can also go to Amazon. It's called Who Do You Think You Are? A Vision Board Workbook for Self Discovery and Authentic Happiness. You can follow me on social media at Liz Number Two Saint, and my website is Liz Number Two Saint dot com. And on my website, you get to meet all of my personalities. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. We were gonna ask you to sing, but we're not gonna do yeah, no, that. No, 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 friend. We're not doing no, that. No, we're not gonna <laughs> do that. But I would like to what? ask her. Go ahead. But we're gonna do no. We're gonna add some of this to the episode. Maybe we could find. Yeah, we'll find something. Uh, so and we'll oh, put yeah, it. Sure. We're gonna put you on an episode. Yeah. yeah. But if you can leave today and tell somebody one thing about one word of encouragement to help them open their ears, mm -hmm. open their mind to be able to purchase your book and really get to know themselves, what would it be? I would say, give yourself grace, always. Because if you can figure out how to give yourself grace in those moments where those thoughts come in and tell you you're not doing enough, you're not doing it right, you know what I'm saying? Anytime that you feel like you could have done better, if you could have done better, you would have. She Ooh. talking to me, y'all. If you if could, you could have, have done, done better, better you, you would have. have. And so you did your best. So give yourself grace. Learn whatever the experience was that was there to teach you. And then adjust and do it differently. And every time you adjust, you get better. Yes. And we were wow. so excited about having you today. We did not even ask you, why did you come to the Power <laughs> Conference today? And what would you hoping to gain from being here? So I came to the Power Conference today. I am a vendor because I am showing up for myself. So I wrote this book and a lot of times we create things and then we put them out. I'm a musician. I've been doing that for years, putting music out. And then I just be like, y'all go listen to it. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you don't put any of the work behind it. Right. And so this is me showing up for myself and what I created in my book. Okay. Doing these conferences, showing up and having conversations with people that I would not have otherwise had access to behind my computer. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I would have not even had the conversation with you if I didn't come earlier and right. probably got here at 12, I would have been busy all day and I wouldn't have received this message and our podcast oh, over there is the one that made me come early. He like, you going to be here before I get here. So <laughs> everything happens for a reason. Shout out so to I'm our so producer. Sure. And yes. yes. I'm so excited. And I really appreciate you lovely ladies in pink. Yes. Thanks well, for joining us today and thank helping you, us stand you. on our business. Yes. So, Thank you guys for tuning in on another episode of Stand On Your Business. Please make sure to subscribe, like, share, so you can continue to receive gems like this. Yes. We were blessed to have you today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yay.
Coming to you guys live today from the Power Conference of WDB Marketing. Look at who we got next. Ooh, Angel Jones in the house. So, Angel, welcome. Thank you. To Thank the you. live Stand On Your Business podcast. Yes. Thank at you. the Legacy Power event. Tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what you do. I know what you do, but they need to know what you do. Of they course. Do so um, I am a business coach. I specialize in helping business owners gain some clarity and structure in their sales department. And I do that through sales training, networking events, and business coaching. And I really am here to connect, and I'm so happy to be here with you, ladies. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. What's the name of your of your firm? Golden Angel Management. Oh. Yes. And how long have you been doing that? So I've been doing coaching since 2015, okay. part-time, but I just transitioned into full-time just two years ago. Oh, wow. And it's been a journey, as you both know. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we always talk about exposure, and it's funny because you just kind of shared a story with me before we started, and I yes. met her at a networking event, and I was telling her a lot of people don't really come up to certain people. They just feel like we're not going to give you love back. And yeah. I was able to talk to her for a second and motivate her and, you know, tell us, a, tell, tell the audience a little bit about that. Of course. So I actually started branding myself as your favorite insurance agent. And I was your favorite insurance agent, making sure that I was taking care of realtors and loan officers, clients with their insurance needs and educating people about financial literacy at a Allstate insurance agency that I did not own. And I met Natasha, amazing <laughs> Natasha and Nina, uh, as I was out networking, I was doing all the things and they truly poured into me and I always have been open to mentorship. So I've yeah. always admired and thank you both for always taking me under your wing and sharing my value and showing me what I didn't see in myself at the time, which what is Natasha talking about um, where I met her and she said, girl, you are killing it. You are out here doing the thing like you need to be doing more. You are yeah. playing small. And I said, you're right, sis. <laughs> and I took her advice and here I am. You know, thankfully, I was able to make my first six figures. I was able to grow and expand my impact. Congratulations. And I'm just grateful. Well, I've seen your brand grow. Mm -hmm. I've seen your brand I said her, bro, glo her brand grow and I've seen her glow because yeah. I see her hanging at all Owning of it. Owning it as, yeah. yeah. Knowing it, but now you're like, you own it. But so, I, yeah, I have, see I have seen you, you know, create your platform and create that, you know, repertoire of yourself. Yes. Now, what were you most excited for uh, for the Legacy Conference today? Honestly, I was most excited to connect with all of my family. I yes. feel like this is a big family reunion, oh, you know, wow. um, you know, business owners in Chicago. You know, we are always out and about connecting. But to be in a space to get educated together and yes. motivated together and just break bread together as we are learning and elevating our businesses as we're elevating ourselves. That's what I'm mostly here for and of course nice. to just collaborate with people I don't know so that's pretty much you just energized me right boo. right that just <laughs> gave me some like get some networking on get and your networking it, on absolutely and it means just like we pouring that that's how some of the other attendees are here like I'm here to spend time to break bread to fellowship yes. because we never this get this opportunity. okay yes as we're doing all the things wearing all the hats it's so much working in the business and on the business. Let's come out and just connect and grow it and take our business to the next level together. I'm all about collaboration over Stand on your competition. business. Stand on your business. <laughs> Standing on that business. So right. I became a serial entrepreneur these past five years without planning to do so. It just kind of happened. <laughs> uh -huh. And you are doing business coaching. So yes. what would you say to an entrepreneur that you know, out here, you know, already a brand, mm -hmm. you know, doing their thing, but of course... Everybody needs coaching. I believe in therapy. I believe in coaching. So what would you say to that entrepreneur that does, is not getting coaching right now mm -hmm. and how that may be holding them back from their next level of their business? Well, as you all know, I'm big on mentorship and coaching. So I feel like you have to think back to the athletes, right? Everyone has a coach. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, some of the best at what they do wow. had coaches. So having that mindset of I need a coach to help me elevate to my next level really gets you to see the value in coaching. But as it relates to actually doing the work and maybe just thinking about how you can elevate, always go back to your, what I like to call MVP, your mission, your vision, yes. your values, and your purpose. Go back to that so you can consistently be in alignment with what you're really trying to do as you're making business number two, three, four, and five, ensuring that it's all aligned so you're not all over the place and get overwhelmed and then get burned out. Yes. 
and you can't get burned out. And for those people that are out there starting businesses, mm -hmm. they don't have any money or okay. not a lot of money, and they're thinking about getting a coach to get started so they don't jump into very successful business and they have to go backwards again. Coaching. Don't you remember right. Byron was there? So we had mobile home elite was with us and he gave us like a page Turner story. He mm. used his last mm. savings, not to invest in property, but he invested, but to in, invested in a life Twi coach yes. in a life coaching. And, um, what was it? A course, a certification. It was something like but it, it was, was the last, last 12,000. <laughs> and he invested it and, only to catapult in a whole different category because he had that business uh, coaching foundation down pat. Yes. You know what I mean? I did the same. And that's the last thing you most did the people way. think. People <laughs> like me, same. that's yes. the last thing I think to spend my dollars on. Coaching. Coaching? Yeah, that's for me, like for all of the years, like mm -hmm. I've never invested in a coach. I've interviewed a few coaches. Yeah, I, did, mm -hmm. I put a post out on, I haven't, I'm like one day I'm sitting there, I need to find a business coach for quarter two. Mm -hmm. They recommended you. But it's not because I got like three referrals for you. That's like dumb. business coaching. And I have done nothing since that. Because we don't, because we just get so busy and we keep putting it to the side. So, so I'm not standing on my tell business. Tell us why we should stand <laughs> on our business and have business coaches if we want to have successful businesses, even if we think our businesses are already successful. Well, I think I challenge you all to ask yourselves, why don't you feel like you're worth the investment? And I, I say that because I did the same in terms of using my last to invest in coaching. When I mm. left my job, I had no savings. I had no uh, plan. Technically, I just knew I, I needed to make the leap and bet on myself because I knew I could win. Thanks to my sis encouraging me and my other mentors. Mm. I just knew I had to do it. And I spent my last to go out to Atlanta for a business conference to get nice. some coaching. And if you don't have much money, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go back to the question, but if you don't have much money, but you know that you need to invest in coaching and development, then look back at what you do have. Focus on what you do have. There are a lot of coaches that don't necessarily cost you anything. You can look at their YouTube, look mm -hmm. at their content. It's free business coaching through, I'm sure, your local chamber or your local. Like here we have the Cook County. We just learned about the Cook County um, um, network that we have here. So yeah. there are free coaching, but... It's something about investing in your own personal development that it's helps true. you elevate to a new level, it's true. especially if you are a coach teaching others. Yeah. So if you're a coach teaching others, which most of us are, you both are real estate moguls, but you teach others real estate, right? So imagine someone feeling like, why should they pay you for your expertise? Right. You know the value you have, the books you've read, the conferences you've attended, the knowledge you've gained is valuable. And that comes at a cost because you paid the cost. So you're not necessarily paying for the actual <laughs> um, coaching coach itself. You're technically paying for time back. Exactly. Yeah. So you're paying for learning how to not make the mistakes. You're paying for getting back my and time you because I, you know, I have, right? Yeah. It, <laughs> so I, I hope I that answers that question. It's just making it a priority. So yeah. standing yeah. on your business is a podcast to get people to stand on your business, doing mm -hmm. things like making coaching a priority yes. so that way you can get to the next level. Because we complain about what we need to do, <laughs> but, but we I, sometimes don't do I, it. I want us to give us a little grace, like the young lady uh, said earlier, Liz. Yes. Give us a little grace because one thing we have prioritized and invested in is in therapy. Like, I know you have been in your mm -hmm. own personal journey with therapy. I have finally committed to my therapist. Now I feel like I can commit to other right. spaces one in my life. One thing at a time. So I'm just going to give us a little bit of grace. Okay. You, I mean, I yeah, feel like I you should. I got on punishment to get today for not giving <laughs> myself enough grace. And it was one more thing she got on me about on one of the um, on one of the podcasts today. So we yeah. actually have learned a lot, a lot from being here today and connecting with, you know, our sisters and, yes. and, and sharing the love because we need each other. I we love it. to connect yeah. together. Yes, we and do. we're always learning from each other. And I feel like that part, that grace and that therapy, okay, I feel like there's three people as an entrepreneur you need in your life, no matter what. First person is the therapist, yeah. because in order to handle the capacity that comes with an abundance of success, you need to have the mental clarity and in in your mental space clear. Then second person is an accountant. You need someone to help make sure your books are in order. And then the third person is a coach. You right. need someone to help you elevate to your next level. So yeah. I feel like if we got, you we don't got a few check boxes, I know, yeah. Right? We're working it's, on. It's, it's don't, and I feel like, you know, like yeah. you said, you should give yourself grace. Don't feel like you have to beat yourself up. If you don't have a coach or you're not investing in the coach, maybe you just haven't found the right one. 
or maybe you haven't um, just kind of found the prioritization of the time to say this is something I look forward to. But just know the longer you put it off, you're going to reach a point where you're going to get told by God because God has a way of I'm telling us he's our best know. business partner. Yeah. You need to get this coach and this is and this is why and stop putting it off. It'll well, be today your time when it's ready. you exposed to a coach yeah. on Stand Your Business <laughs> podcast. podcast. That's yes, what I'm talking right. about. How can everybody get a hold of you? So they can reach me at 312-505-7629. They can just text business coaching to that number or they can just go to goldenangelmanagement.com it will literally give you all the information there follow me on all social media platforms at angelisha j and that's a-n-g-e-l-e-s-h-a and then the letter j Hey, nice. <laughs> well, we appreciate you so much for dropping some gems today. She did. Awesome. Sure did. Putting some things on our mind and giving us some grace. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes. I wasn't expecting any less, but, it's just, <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting any less, but, you know, it feels good. It feels good to see you glow, girl. Oh, thank you. Thank you both <laughs> so much for having me. And y'all know I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm by myself. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> yes. We did. Hey guys, welcome to Stand On Your Business Podcast. I am Natasha Robinson and my co-host is Nina Gonzalez. So today we are at the Legacy Power Conference and we are so grateful to have a personal friend of ours, a business partner, an entrepreneur, a a New York bestseller. Woo-hoo. I'm excited. So <laughs> her picture, and I'm gonna steal her thunder, but you were all over Times Square. That I, I don't think we have any amazing. of our personal circle who's done that feat. Now, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> I appreciate all those accolades. Thank you, Nina. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, but I'm Donna Rogers. I'm the proud owner of the international and national award-winning books, Who Got the Keys, uh, which speaks about generational wealth is to expose and educate today's black youth to become tomorrow's homeowners and investors. Awesome. We keep hearing that word exposed. And I think that one thing that I love about you is that, you know, African-American homeownership has been something that we have been working on for years. As a matter of fact, since 1979, we have that same percentage today of yeah. African-American homeowners. So I feel like you starting with the youth um, is a big deal. Right. So we can start younger. So tell us a little bit of why your goal was to start with the younger population. Absolutely. I'm a product of generational wealth. And it's not that my family gave me a lot of tangible things, but they gave me a lot of intangible things by setting an ownership mindset at a very early age. Because you could be given something and not be able to maintain it because you don't know what to do with it. And so it was what I saw. My first job was working for my parents. I mean, I know how to change locks. I know how to get furnaces going. I know how to change sinks. Woman power. Now, thank you, Lord, I'm at a stage where I can hire others to do it. But I learned that at an early age based on what I saw what I was exposed to. I did not know what I wanted to do career-wise, but I knew I would be an investor, whatever it is. So I know the power of exposure as far as developing a mindset. It's a mentality, right? Us as business owners, it's a mentality. Ownership is a mentality. And so it's important for me to do what my parents did for me, which was pass me the keys of our ownership mindset so I can pass the keys to the next generation so I can empower them to pass the keys to the generations after them. Awesome. And I think through your program, you also give them opportunity to become a realtor after they graduate from high school. So tell us Absolutely. a little bit about So that. we give them opportunity to become real estate professionals through a scholarship in honor of my late dad, John uh, P. Rogers, who exposed me. And so they can apply for scholarships through his foundations. We just awarded three seniors wow. um, at our YRD Chicago Realtors Youth Summit that we had for <laughs> juniors and seniors in the Rosen community. And so that's just an example of the many things that we do. We've done internships Internships. Just last summer, we had about 15 youth from the Chicago Housing Authority. And so they had paid internships program. The whole curriculum was about who got the keys. I'm nice. a part of YRD Chicago. That's the Young Realtors. We represent the Black Real Estate Association. Just through that program alone, they just licensed who got the keys. And so now who got the keys is being taught in 12 different states. Nice. So wow. I teach them my curriculum. They pay to be an ambassador. And then they go out and they teach it. And I teach them how to make impact and income okay. from doing the Who Got the Keys program. So, yes. 
at, just out of curiosity, what age group is that really targeted to in regards to comprehension? Absolutely. That's a great question. Ideally, the high school age, the 14 to 19, because we at least want them to know the basic math, basic reading skills, because we know if you're going to be an investor, you need to know mm -hmm. how to count your money yeah. so you don't get ripped <laughs> off, right? And so we try to target that high school age, especially the juniors and seniors that are getting ready to matriculate to the next stage in life. Okay. Um, and college may or may not be for everyone. Now, I say that with a disclaimer because mm -hmm. I was a business professor for years, so I am pro-college, um, but I am pro-living on purpose, and I understand that's not for everyone. But guess what is for everyone, which is what I teach the young people, real, real estate, estate investing, right? Yes, it is. And yeah. so that's what this is about, is to expose them to things that the average youth, especially in our communities as minorities, is not exposed to. I, I just took an application for a young lady who brought her parents. She's 20 years old, wow. preparing for home ownership, and as we're going through this and she's going to her dad, this was literally two days ago. Mm. She's looking at her dad to explain certain things to her and their specialized sort of communication. Mm -hmm. And she tells me at the end, Nina, they should have been teaching this in high school. I wish they would have taught me this in high school. We don't see it as being important, at least in our communities, because even when we think about the percentage of home ownership amongst blacks before the age of 35, we're at a 10 percent. Everyone else is double or higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, that exposure makes a difference. We have to be intentional about it. I always tell my clients, where are your kids? You know, there'd be a time where I found the babysitting for them. No, this is exposure. This is time to bring your child yes. through so every step see. of the yeah. way because what you see makes a difference. It's your environment, right? Yeah. If I'm only exposed to negative things, then I will more than likely develop a negative mindset. Okay, so that being <laughs> said, realtors, buyers, while you're out there on your search, for take your children with you. Yes. Explain them the process. Have them look at the different facades and listen yes. in to what the real estate agent is saying while on this search. Now, I wanted to go back really quick on how you help with the scholarships. What does the selection process look like? Because that's something that, like, how, how do you pick from so many? So I'll be honest, I kind of make myself arm's distance because I build a lot of personal relationships with the right. youth. I'm the instructor. Oh, and wow. so Mimi may be a favorite, you know. So my family does it. And so it was actually a foundation we started in 2018 when my father was still alive. Yes. Um, and so they get the applications. They can send the application. It's a 500-word essay. Why do you want to be in real estate? What do you plan to do on real, in real estate? And so they send that essay over, and then there's a board of directors that go through the applications, and then they make a final decision. And then they just let me know who they decided, the and then we make the announcement. Yeah. What does your impact look like for the youth moving forward? Like, so that's what we did last year. This is, you know, what's going on now. What does, what does the next year look like for that? Hiring more of the youth. So I have agents in my office that went through the program. One okay. of the young ladies that is a licensed leasing agent, she was in my first Who Got the Keys program during the pandemic. And how old wow. was that um, How did agent? she? So mm -hmm. that was in 2020. I'm not going to say her name. I want to say she's 23, 22, uh, 23 yeah, now. Yeah. And we just spoke the other day about her getting her finances in order so she, she can, can find her, yeah. her, that was her gonna first be my investment question. property. What was the age of your first successful So it ranged. It was with a not-for-profit called Real Beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to my sister, D, who's over that program. Um, but it's Real Beauty Not-for-Profit. And we did it online, mm -hmm. virtually. I want to say it was 2020, either the end of 2019 or 2020, but she was a part of the first graduating program. Got you. Wow. And she's a part of the team. So the internship is not meant to be temporarily. And when you talk about impact, that's that, a long-term you took, thing. You took my next question right <laughs> out of my mouth. Like, okay, you got them here, but what happens? Like, you get them the keys, now... Who takes them the rest of the way? Right. Yeah, so it's the keys of information first, right? Because we know that a key can be that metal object you stick in a door. It could be a key of access. The purpose of the key remains the same, right? We give an access of information so you can get that tangible key in your hand. So with a lot of the young people, we give them the internship programs. Based on the internship programs, we have hired some of the young people. They have maybe been my administrative assistant, oh, wow. okay. different things like that. Because of their age, it takes a while where you have to watch them and stay connected long term. So mm -hmm. it's not, when we talk about impact, it really is a long term thing. 
we have short-term impact that's a change in the thought process right and then the next step is now you know about budgeting so when mom or dad are giving you an allowance are you putting the savings away are you paying your bills on time so a lot of the schools are wind up going back the next year and following up yeah. with those students or they're the ones that get the testimony or they may be my student helpers so they're still getting reiterated the information uh, multiple times so they can make sure that they're implementing in their life here's the other key ladies we also want to make sure that they go tell mom and dad. I was so, just going to yes. say that. I was just going to say that because my mother listened to me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we, you know, didn't have much when we grew up. Okay. And I'm the one who made her pull her credit from bankruptcies or whatever and then end up having a seven, 800 credit score and didn't know. Oh, wow. didn't know. Now she has her own house free and clear, but never in a million years thought she was going to have home ownership, but she listened to me. Yeah. So if you teach the kid, the kid exactly. is going to teach the Mom parents. So now you get two buyers exactly. and maybe an auntie and maybe an uncle. Exactly. They have to do that in the last, the last session. The very oh. last session is called Now Use Your Key. And one of the things they have to do is the goal setting. Once they do the goal setting, they have to give an affirmation for every goal because at the end of every session, we do real estate investing affirmations. And then the last part is now who you passing the keys to. You got to give me at least three people you passing these keys to and why. Mm -hmm. Pass the and keys. And so it, that's, wow. to me, that's the generational wealth that I'm trying to set is the information first. And also you spoke to, if I may share at the beginning, Natasha, that we have had the same uh, rate of black home ownership since Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated yeah. in 1968, right? 68. We're still in the same percentile. Mm -hmm. So that means we have not made much progress. And that's and even of worse course, I said exactly, 79. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're in 2024. Now, now, we yeah. got a lot of progress with make, but we have access to a lot of things that they didn't, our parents did. Yeah, that's true. And we're still in a 40 percentile. That's a problem. And so for me, this is me doing my part of the solution because exposure just makes the difference. Yeah, I had I a think, young lady give me just huge insight on that. She She's with the Woodstock Project here locally, okay. and she studies urban real estate. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has this this franchise of uh, families is maintenance. And since the home ownership hasn't been taught from generation to generation, exactly. the maintenance and deferred maintenance and the dilapidation of the actual tangible building yeah. mm -hmm. has not been taught either. So we think it's just this problem for consumer, but it's actually another problem of sustainable home ownership. Exactly. And I was going to say, People are getting into homes, right? Mm -hmm. We're closing 300 loans a year, mm -hmm. right? We're getting them in, but people are losing their homes at the same rate because mm -hmm. we're teaching them how to get in the house, but we're not teaching them how to keep the house. Exactly. So the education well, and the access. We, we teach them. I'm not saying of, we. I'm no, no, about, I'm saying as a collective. Right. There are so many resources out here. There's HUD agencies in but HUD people housing don't agencies. Know. At least one to two in each huge neighborhood in the city of Chicago. Each big suburb but has people, a housing but agency. People don't don't know and Free they will services. google yes. if they have a roofing problem they will google it they will and pay seventy thousand for a roof they could have got fifteen thousand or when you have a plumbing problem my own sister called the plumbing company they trying to charge her eighteen thousand dollars for a job that i can get done for her for eight hundred dollars or something but that's the things that we don't we aren't we don't educated know. and they don't utilize you don't yeah, that's right in their resources. back door so we talk about managing real estate too okay so there's a chapter on managing we touch everything, entrepreneurship, <laughs> I love it. property I want to sit down in this class. leadership <laughs> skills, all of that and so much more. Because like you said, it's not about just obtaining it, it's maintaining it as well. And now that I have it, I have to teach someone else. So we go through all of those different steps. The focus for me has been black youth. Of course, any young person is welcome in the class, but because our numbers continue to be the lowest, we're at the lowest when it comes to wealth. Mm -hmm. We're at the lowest when it comes before home ownership before age 35 and of course we know we're at the lowest when it comes to home ownership overall so the need it's a need in general but it's a greater need because the black and brown community continues to be the most affected yes. and impacted when it comes to increasing black home ownership wow what a gem right we love what you're doing <laughs> like it's amazing and you know you give so much yeah being I the president it. you I know of yrd it taking the time to go through to all the CPS schools. Wait, to, we didn't really touch on that uh, either. Can you talk a little bit about YRD presidency? I mean, that's pretty big. Right, she didn't say president when she introduced we, it. We, we, <laughs> didn't, we, didn't, we didn't really touch on that. Can you Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a humble position, I will say. Uh, 
But the Young Realtors, the Young Realtors Division, we are an affiliate of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. The National Association of Real Estate Brokers was very significant in Democracy for Housing, which is the admission, and they are the premier network when it comes to black real estate professionals. So I have the honor of serving as the president of the Young Realtors Chicago chapter under our national president, Joan. <laughs> Shout out to her. Um, and so our mission is to redefine the real estate culture for tomorrow's leaders because we're we're talking about black home ownership and we're talking about wealth, but blacks have the lowest rates when you come to, you know, real right. estate professionals. Here we are at the bottom again, right? And so our job is to expose us as much as possible, but create opportunities of employment in various fields, not just being real estate professionals as far as real estate agents, but attorneys, lenders, contractors, appraisers. Exactly. Yes. Appraisers. All of that. All of that. Because we know that we have appraisers that often come to our community communities have no idea about anything that's going on for redevelopment and they're undervalued and underpriced our home. And so our young people have to be exposed to the, yes, they do. the big ram, you know, of everything. But young realtors, we are doing an amazing job. Shout out to my team. We just had a big and the first uh, real estate summit. It was a full day. We had eight different high schools that come out with us. We had 240 something youth that registered with us and it was a full day of learning and impact. It was amazing. It was awesome. amazing. So you do grassroots efforts with the neighborhood, direct, tangible contact with the youth. You do for the frontline work with the YRD and the Na National Association of Real Estate. Um, Realtors. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that out. <laughs> and with all of that being said, can you tell us a little bit of how to find you, where to get your book, all of the good stuff? Absolutely. And I got to plug one more thing, if I may, as a businesswoman. Mm. And that is our Legacy Academy. That is a licensed black owned, black woman owned real estate school. So those who want to become licensed <laughs> agents, holler at me at our Legacy Academy, right? That's yeah. our Legacy Academy .com. Exposure. If you want to find me on IG or Facebook, I am Realtor Donna JR. That's Donna Jr. I'm a junior. And so the legacy continues in honor of my dad, in honor of my family, and most importantly for our community as a whole. So our Legacy Academy, check me out who got the keys you can go to the who got the keys website order your copies of this award-winning book or contact me or how i can come to your school your church your for-profit whatever the case may be to empower your young people thank you so much ladies awesome and before you leave why the power legacy conference so we are here today to represent podcasts you know for yes. wb marketing so tell us why you came here today Absolutely. And let me say, you ladies are doing a fabulous job, if well, I may say you. so. <laughs> but I just want to honor um, Kiana James and her team. So let me say this. While we're talking about who got the keys, no joke. If you look at my acknowledgments, you're going to see WDB marketing up yeah. here. Right? So Full Kiana was moment. with me at the start of when I was coming up with the visual for this book. Right. And so it's only right that we support each other. We it. lift each yeah. other up. We collaborate with each other. Um, she has helped me out tremendously in my business. And so if my presence can just alone be a part of what they're doing, absolutely. But I love being in a room amongst my peers. Yes. I love encouraging, promoting others. I'm all for legacy. This is about legacy. We just said exposure makes a difference. It's a lot of young business people in here. I'm excited about that. Yes. When I see their young faces, and even in our our age, I won't tell my age, but in our age group, <laughs> even still, you may have a brand new entrepreneur that just needs this type of exposure. And so I'm just excited at what they're doing, the team, and how I could be a part of it and support it anyway. And you have a chant before. So before you leave, you know, you're a little <laughs> punk right now. You got to do your chant. I always ask the young people, who got the keys? And they say, I, I got, got the, the keys. keys. Who got the keys? I, I got, got the keys. keys. Who got the keys? I, I got, got the keys. keys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Who got thank the keys? Thank you so much for joining us today on Stand On Your Business Podcast. Make sure to like, <laughs> share, and subscribe to, to continue to get this valuable information.